Hey guys, this is me Ashik. So today we will look on how to implement OAuth in our Flask application. So I already have a simple Flask app. And I have also installed Authlib. If you don't have, you can just run pip and install Authlib to install Authlib. So once you have installed successfully, we are just importing this OAuth from authlib.integration.flask client. And we are just creating an instance of the Authlib which we just So now if we just see the documentation, so I will give the links for all of this in the description so that you can check that out. So we need to go inside the OAuth clients and then we need to go into Flask OAuth clients. So now we have imported and created an object. So next thing we need to do is something like we need to create an OAuth registry for our Google and our GitHub. So I already have it typed here. This takes a lot of time to type, so that's the reason I already have it typed. So, by the way, we need to pass in our application, app object to it. So, we we'll just copy it out. So, this will be same for everyone who ever uses it. So, we'll be using Google SOAuth. So, we have our Google client ID and our client secret in our uh, configuration file. We have not yet added it, we will do it at last the access token URL and the API base URL it's going to be same for everyone but the main thing is the scopes so scopes is nothing but the extent of information we want Google to give back to us on a successful sign up with Google so we are requesting the open ID and email and the user's profile so once we have created our OAuth registry so we need to go into auth and we need to create two routes, one for the login route and another one for the authorization. So let me just create them both. So the login route is the route which gets it when the user logs in and the authorized route is the route to which the user is redirected on in case of a successful login. So and these routes names are not mandatory, we can just change them out. So I'd like to change them as slash login slash Google and I'll change the name of the function as Google login. So I'm naming it as Google login because in our HTML file that's what we defined it. So it was Google login, so that's why I'm naming it as Google login. Mm, so we will also rename it as slash login slash google slash authorize and we'll also rename this as google underscore authorize so we are using the url for and uh, redirect so we'll import them both from flask which url for and redirect so yeah so the next thing which i would like to do is that i'm going to create an OAuth client by saying Google equals OAuth dot create client. I'm going to pass in Google. So the reason to do this is that so when you create an OAuth client, you can just simply say then saying OAuth dot Twitter dot authorized token. You can just say Google dot authorized. You can also rename this as Google dot get Google dot get you don't need a such a big string you can just say Google dot get user info and we'll just get it as a JSON. So we'll remove all this when here we'll create our client we say Google equals words dot create client we will pass in Google. So we will rename it as Google dot authorize redirect. So since we have changed the name here, we should also change it here as Google underscore authorize. So that's it. So what this basically does is that whenever a user logs in on a successful login, it's going to redirect them to this route. So in this route, we will get the 
your response and we'll since we have since we have the response in this object so we can just print this out to see whether it's working or not in the, in the formatted string so simply to just format the output and then we are going to just return and something like you are successfully Fully logged, fully sorry, sorry, sign in using Google. So that's it. So, uh, so that's pretty much it. That's all about the Google login. So if we, so once we have created a, so implemented Google login, the GitHub is going to pretty much look the same. So I'm just going to register. With GitHub auth, I'm just going to register GitHub as a registry. So I'll just register it. So you can just pretty much copy this both. So it's going to be the same for the most part. So we'll just rename we'll just everything to GitHub. 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 GitHub underscore login. GitHub. Even here we should rename it. So GitHub underscore operator. So Authorb is really an easy way to implement OAuth actually. So just we'll change everything. Well, this is so the only thing which changes is that so in case of Google we said Google.get user info. In case of GitHub, we just need to say user not user info. We'll just change this to GitHub. GitHub. So now we have uh, for the most part, that's all uh, about the OAuth implementation. So now we need to register our app with Google and GitHub so that we can, you know, so that when you register, you'll get a client ID and a client secret. We'll do that. So the link, I'll give this link below in the description. So you need to go to this link. I already have an application created. If you don't have, you can just create a new project. So I'll select this project. So once you create your Project, you just need to go in the, into this auth concern screen and just set up something. So then you need to go into this credentials. Mm. And then you need to click on create credentials. So and then you need to select auth client ID. Mm. You need to select the application type as web application. The names are pretty much the same. We'll just so since we are developing it locally, we need to put in the local address on which our app is hosted at. So for my case, it's going to be 127.4.4.1 thousand. So if your app is hosted on a different IP address, so you need to add that. So this authorized redirect URI is nothing but the uh, URA to which the user should be redirected in case of a successful login. So if you remember, we had our redirect URA slash login slash Google slash authorize. So we need to give that here. We just add in HTTP. So I already have it. HTTP colon slash the seven dot four dot four dot one colon five thousand slash login slash Google slash authorize. So that's all pretty much. Let me just click on create. So once you create, Google will give you a client ID and client secret. So it has to be really secret. So for this part, I'm the best practice is to 
store all of this in your configuration file and then load it in your application so for this demo i'm going to just add it here app.config google client id which can be equal to what i just copied right now so and then it's app.config google client secret so we have to copy that too I think Google is pretty much done. Yeah, I just missed it. It should have been GitHub and Discover files. So now we need to register our app with GitHub as well. So also, I'll also give this link in your description. You need to go into your GitHub account and you need to go and search settings. You need to go to developer settings and click on OAuth apps and register a new application. So we will just give the name as demo app. Home page URL is http colon slash slash one thousand five thousand. So the description is not needed. The callback URL is nothing but the authorized redirect URL. So this is going to be slash logging slash github slash authorize. So we will register our application. So once you have registered, this is your github client ID. So we will add this to our configuration file. So after config github Client ID and equal to we need to get our GitHub client secret. So we we'll click on generate a new client secret. So now this is our client secret. We'll just copy it. Let's copy it. So app config git GitHub client secret this is going to be equal to so one thing that's pretty much it we have created our github so let me just update my application so i think that's it guys we are pretty much done with implementing what now let us just test it and see whether it works or not so we just do flask run. So it's running. We will just just refresh my app. So Authlib uses request library for Python, but it does not install it. So we need to install Authlib as well. Sorry, request pipen install. So we just take some time. So it will log. basically we install a request and modify the pip file. So no need to worry about all this. I will just upload all of this code to GitHub. So no need to worry too much about that. So I think everything is fine. So let's just wait until the request is in. It's install it's just locking yeah. the reason why I say to use pipen is that pipen it's pipen is, is actually a great tool to manage your dependencies it creates a pip file and a pip file dot lock so if you see we have all of our installed packages of the requests. So now let me restart my last app. I think it should work this time. Yep. 
So let's just hope this works. Let me click on Google. Uh, the sessions unavailable because no secret key was set. So this is actually set it. Google client secret. I don't know where I am making a mistake. Google client secret. Mm. Just one second, guys. Let me just. Guys, the error was because I did not set any secret key. So let me just do it. And dot config. Last stores all of these tokens in in the session variable so it needs a secret key let me just set it to something this should be this should be something secret so i think that it will work this time let's refresh it so hopefully this is working now I'm going to use my test account. So yeah, now if you see it's working. This is the user info that Google has given us. So this is the uh, email. We have their email, their whether they are verified or not. We have their logo to their image. We have a link to their image. So it's good that it's working. So let's also check whether GitHub works or not. Let's click on GitHub. So it's asking me whether should you authorize this demo app. So let me just click on authorize. Yeah. So now if we see so uh, this is what GitHub has. It's really a long list. GitHub has entered. We have their login ID, we have their open ID, their node ID, we have their number of followers, HTML, we have all those stuff. So that's it, guys. So hopefully this was useful. Just one second. Yeah. This is all about implementing OAuth in your class application. So I'll upload this code in GitHub so that which you so that you can use this as a reference. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching.